previous lesson, we looked at how to break down uh, HTML page and how we can render each of the section. In this lesson, we are going to look at how to implement each of these blocks. And let's see how it works. First, to begin this project, we need to create a project file. So I'm just going to go to my project file and just create a new folder. Then title, you can give it folder anything, but I like to be specific with my project name. So I'm just going to say project management dashboard. Perfect. So we're just going to drag it into a VS code, the VS code. Let's make it the bigger screen. And now we have a project folder. So let's just go ahead to create our first file, which is just going to be index.html. Index.html. Perfect. So now we have our file. The next we want to do is to declare our boilerplate, which is going to be the header tag and the body tag. With my exclamation mark, VS Code can generate that for me immediately. So I'm just going to enter. So these are the basic meta tags that we need. All right, so I can just update the title to, to be project management dashboard. Okay, so these are the basic descriptions that we need for now. So what we need to do is to start declaring our HTML mockup. So let's go back to our design and look at what we need to do. Remember, we have a div which is going to serve as the overall container. So let's do that. So we can just say div. Then let's give it a class of dashboard. Okay, so we have our div. One common thing we may want to do is to also add the comments. We can just say dashboard. Then we can just indicate dashboard end. This is just going to make us to know the end of this tag, no matter the length of the HTML mockup that we're going to have as children of this very element. So let's see how it works. The next is, let's see, we need to declare each of the section. You can see that the next is sections. So we have about three sections. We have section one, which is going to be for the navbar. Then we have the section which contains the actual content and the search features. Then we have like a summary version, which is going to be also by the right. What we're going to implement in this very lesson will be this navbar, but we are going to cater for the remaining section. So why not we just go on and create all the sections that we need. To create a section, we're going to use section tags. So we're just going to say it's section. First, to be able to identify each of the section, we can just give them classes. So we can call this like the navigation. So let's just have our comments as well. I'm just going to give it navigation. Then we need to end it. Just say end. Okay. So we can duplicate this. And the next is going to be the main. We can just say main. And just also give this main and this main as well. The next is we can just also duplicate this and give this. Remember, we have three sections. Now we have the three of them. But let's also give these like secondary class. Secondary then we can just change this as well to secondary. Secondary. Okay. So if we try to load a page, let's just try to copy the parts. 
let us load our Google Chrome. If we load it, we are not seeing anything yet, but we can see the project title. Okay, that's because we've declared all the sections, but we're yet to insert any content in them. So let's deal with the nav bar section. For us to be able to do that, we have to cater for the first image. So I'm just going to tattoo that image. Then we can give it a source. Right now, there's no image. Let's look for one image. So we're going to be using a logo. Now to get the logo, let's just navigate to where we have some logos. We're going to be using Instinct of Thumbnail. Um, let's just copy it and go back to our project folder and just create an asset folder. Assets. Then in the asset folder, let's just have images. So we can just have image, then paste. So let's go back to our project and just navigate to this new asset folder. We're just going to say assets. And we have the image. If we go back to our Google Chrome and just refresh, be able to see the image, which is very cool. Let's give our image an alt attribute. So um, we can just say instinct of logo. Okay. So if we check our design again, we'll see that what we need to get now are the icons. So let's see if we can use Google icon. So I'm just going to save fonts.google dot com forward slash icons let's see if we can get icons from there all right we might not be able to get the exact icon that was used but let's try as much as we can to pick something closer so this is going to be like a dashboard which makes a lot of sense we're just going to click it and copy then go back to our code so i think it would be nicer to wrap all the icons in another div so let's just call it a div and just have the first icon let's make it one line if we save it and go to our google chrome and refresh we might not see anything we only just see dashboard that's basically because there's one more step we need to do i think two more steps before we'll be able to use the Google icon. So let's go back to Google icon documentation and just click the instructions to see what we can do in order for the icon to show. Let's see the guide and let's go to material icon guide. Yeah, so you can read all of this, but we're just gonna skip to the section that we need this linking is going to make more sense to us so let's copy the link and just come to a project header the head tag then let's have that let's go back to our project and refresh even when we refresh we don't get to see anything there's still one more step left what we need to do is to add a CSS class and for us to do that we need to create a CSS file so let's create in our folder, asset folder, let's just create CSS folder. Then in the CSS folder, let's just create style. The CSS. Okay, so let's look at the class here. In fact, if you come to the documentation, they are still going to further show you what you need to do. So you call the class, then call this font family. So I'm just going to copy this first or I can even copy all of them and just come to uh, CSS and just make sure that the class of our icon here is the same. So I'm just going to copy the class and replace it with this default class. I come back to HTML. HTML is not aware of our CSS yet. So that's why if we come and refresh, we don't see anything yet. So let's go ahead to link our CSS, so we can just say link, 
then let's reference the asset folder we have CSS then we have style dot CSS if we save it nothing really happened Okay, so the major issue is that we are saving the folders into the image folder. So let's just remove this. We can remove this. Just, just delete this. Let's move it to trash. Then we can change this to assets. So if we come to refresh, everything should work fine. You can see that we have a button. What we can do again is to add another icon. So let's go back to our icon. Let's check the next icon. This is going to be like frequency. Is there a way for us to search? Let's see if we will get frequency. Let's see beats. Let's see hats. We can see icon really close to what we have here but i think let's just go for this arrow so i'm just going to copy it like i said we might not be able to get the exact icons but we'll use something similar if we save it for refresh you can see that we have that as well okay so what's the next icon this is more like people or profile okay this is social let's go with this one the next one is like dates let's see date shouldn't be hard to find Let's go with this one. Let's see how many we have left. We have settings. Settings should be very easy to, to find. Settings actually is still not easy to find I thought it was but let's see in fact let's try to see the social let's see if social is going to give us something apparently this icon is really not holistic I just used to explore it but it seems it's not really serving as you can see we can't find settings which is very bad so this is what they are suggesting to us i think i'm surprised why we are going to search for settings and that option didn't come up wow i think this is still work in progress as it's not really user friendly well, let's just go with this settings and so that we can move on I'm just going to proceed and if you go to our project and refresh you can see that we have all the icons showing which is very cool and that's how we wrap it up on this one in the next lesson we'll be looking at how to create this section the section that contains the main content and that will be an interesting part thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one